Hey, welcome back. And now we're going to take a look at probably the final installment of my drawing for a variant cover, a special cover for a future event. So yesterday I kind of kept on working. I didn't do any more recording and this is to the point where I'm at. And one of the things that I noticed yesterday while working is that <clears throat> the image itself just seems a little bit off. Um, you know, the, the position of this hand is just weird, so I'm probably just going to end up reworking the hand. Um, also, I dropped in the original sketch as, as well. <clears throat> Is that the sketch? No, this is the sketch. So just taking a look and you don't really get a sense that <clears throat> this is actually his knee dropping down. So I just need to go through the, uh, the layers here and um, and there's lots of layers. <clears throat> I just want to sharpen up some of the these areas just to make it kind of curve this kneecap to give it a, a, a general sense that it is moving back. We're probably going to get into these guys or possibly not. I'll just have to go to the orb level and just curve it under the knee. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to the orb level. Let's deselect this. <clears throat> we'll get the eyedropper tool and we'll eyedropper this green. Let's ramp this. Rip this one up a bit. I'm just going to go underneath the knee. I think too it was the, the positioning of the lag itself that just made it seem so so odd. In theory, it should come around like this. You just get a sense that the the lag is kind of coming down like this and then jutting back. And the same thing with this lag. This lag needs a little bit more <clears throat> of an angle going on as well. And we can probably do that just by adding in some of this background green ooze and then just by possibly uh, bulking up the knee a little bit as well <clears throat> just delete that we'll come to this layer which is actually the background layer we're gonna just bring the knee over and then Just create more of a lunge type scenario. <clears throat> there we go. Select black. Go in here. All right. You already get that sense that one's moving forward and one's moving backwards. Now it's just cleaning up some of this mess.
on it to beat that up. <coughs> kind of left with a really chunky outline here. Shouldn't be loading at all. Oh, I know what's going on here. The orbs, too. That's what's creating that halo effect. <clears throat> so right now we got that more of that general sense of this likes going forward um, we can probably incorporate a little bit of the lag as well just to show that it's inserting or connecting and what do we got here <clears throat> Just that arm's really thick. Basically what we're going to do now is we're, we're just going to continue by <clears throat> adding hair. And what I've been doing is I've been Where's the hair level here? I think it's the creature. Yeah. So you can see here, uh, this layer is kind of like the highlight on the fur. And these guys are the, <clears throat> the uh, hair level. There's also a dark layer here too, a shadow layer, which I think I need to work on as well. I'll do that once when I got some more. So let's go to the creature level. We'll add a creature three. <clears throat> and this will be just adding more hair and highlights and things like that. <clears throat> Another thing we're going to do is turn this layer off. When this is all ready to go, we're going to cut the, <clears throat> the layer out. That's another thing we could do is probably just add some highlights into the, the teeth and in the mouth as well in Creature 3. So Let's go in here. We'll go with a slightly darker green. Jumping back in the illustration, probably. 
probably one of the harder things you can do. <clears throat> feel a, a rhythm. <clears throat> Let's get out of the smudge tool and do a little smudging. <clears throat> that just accentuates his mouth a lot. With the, uh, the orbs here. Orbs too. This is where he's got his, uh, his eye shine. I'm just gonna... Not sure if I'm a... Well, I like the, the glowing eyes, yes, but... <clears throat> Some of it might seem a little intense for me. I'm just going to actually go through orbs too and just delete this out for now. To accentuate a little bit more of his, his face there. I can go back in with. Oops. Because the layer's muted as well. Let's just view uh, print size. So this is going to be the size that it wallet I'm working on. So 11 by 17, but it's going to be 67% smaller as the actual comic itself. So it's going to be probably very similar in size to to this so <clears throat> it just brings out a little bit more contrast of his face and yeah I can keep on working here as well we haven't really done a whole pack of a lot in the 13 minutes that we've been here so I'll keep on working and uh, can add other layers too
Got some under his arm as well. <clears throat> We're gonna have a little bit of probably some highlight coming in. Caps. you later. <clears throat> Another thing to you is <clears throat> some of this, uh, we'll go to this layer now and take this down quite a bit. just the general like what's happening in this area as well for hair could be another reason why it's just getting a little bit confused here which direction is this hair heading I know it's looking a little, a little crazy right now we can take this just just take it down a little bit. <clears throat> and that just looks like craziness. <clears throat> That's just coming in without a plan. Oops, and of course I'm not in the right layer. Soften this up a bit. <clears throat> I 
did really add some to the shoulders and so on and so forth, but alright, <clears throat> we have this extra layer. Let's go in again. Just keep on seeing things that There's a little squiggly from somewhere on that knee. And I cannot find it. one thing I want to do is remaster this hand and then I think there's just a few layers here to help me remaster this hand <clears throat> layer. Let's delete this layer. got a hand here. Um, I brought the thumb out. I'm still going to keep these fingers back here. I'm going to probably uh, knock some of these fingers out maybe a little bit more. But what we have now is just a nice basically clean layer to work on. And then just with uh, Adding textures and things like that, we can create uh, <clears throat> or fill in the missing missing bits. Try to make, not make it look like a cutout. Just the layer response is just so slow. It drives me bonkers. <clears throat> okay, so that's basically the, the background highlight where we want to start with the hand here. <clears throat> and we're going to select this. We've got our brush, which seems to be really tiny right now. <clears throat> Mm. 
the actual thumb itself is going to come up like this and yeah you can hear my computer really thinking here <clears throat> We're going to have the knuckle, and then it's going to come back. There is going to be these hairs that are going to wander into the form. Another thing we can do is just completely go right over top of the layer. <clears throat> finger there. Just layer select that. And then we can slam her down. <clears throat> there we go. Add a little bit of a relief. <clears throat> And this hand's like really far forward in retrospect, so <clears throat> I'm just not flowing at all this morning. I cannot get a rhythm here. <clears throat> things I look at are bugging me. Of the game, I guess, eh? Everything I do is not working at all. It's bugging the living shit out of me.
going on here? <clears throat> My computer's constantly loading something. I have no idea what the fuck it's loading. seems to be one of the issues that layer seems to be another layer with issues some room lighting or whatever, but Just make the handle a little bit bigger too. what I want to do just because I'm working with too many layers and it's starting to irritate me what I'm gonna do is probably just um, I'm just gonna do it anyways just go for it <coughs> and just work the illustration the way it is. Okay, so what I need is this. <coughs> Excuse me. That came out of nowhere. Alright, so I have those layers now. I'm going to keep my draw layer. And then I'm just going to go down like this to here. Right click and merge layers. And something really weird happened there.
Yeah, there should be no opacity issues or anything like that with merging the layers. Which I think has something to do with this layer being off. Let's try that again. Yeah, because the background was incorporated in the color. So now this is just one image. Just makes my life a little simpler here. Um, <clears throat> right now I'll go file, save as. And then I'll just put version 5. Now I can just work my layers over top and screw around this way and not have to worry about tweaking this or tweaking that and adjusting this and adjusting that and just working over the actual illustration the way it needs to be worked over. So this we're just going to go um, foreground. picker and pick some and we're just working some more of that green swampy stuff Duckweed. <clears throat> Just hammer in some areas. Could be another thing too is that his inseam is very uh, <clears throat> like I had a lot of fur hanging down in his inseam, so that could have been another reason why it was getting a little bit uh, lost in translation. <clears throat> All right, so we got some more green stuff here. I'd like to hit some of the upper parts of the tree as well. Sorry everybody for this uh, but you're gonna you're gonna encounter times where things just don't go the way you want them to. Everything's not smooth like anything in life for sure so just persevere, uh, push through it. Sometimes maybe just take a step back and Take a, take a time out or a breather or whatever. So, but I just woke up too. So, usually uh, when I get up, I have a tendency just to uh, visualize how my day is going to uh, transpire. And usually when I do that, <clears throat> My day tends to be a little clearer in the direction that it's it's heading, so I did not do that this morning, so This is what I should have done to begin with. I should have just flattened out the layer. I think that was my initial plan yesterday was to get it to a certain point, flatten it out, and then uh, <clears throat> commence. 
but when you switch from day to day, your your game plan changes. Uh, also been having a little bit of issues with uh, distraction and memory as well. If I don't write it down, um, it has a tendency just to slip right by. I like this color picker. You know, we, we pick a color and the color might have a slightly different uh, hue or be tonally just a little bit different, but nice because that's perfect for painting. <clears throat> Allows you to dance around your painting and, and add some accents of the color that you picked and this might be a color that you really like. It is kind of like painting just without all the color mixing. <laughs> if anybody's painted for any period of time they, they realize that you know your most essential part of your painting is your color mixing. And how much time you spend with your color mixing can really affect the quality of your your final painting. But to many, color mixing seems really laborious. <clears throat> so you have these little orbs in here as well, and. I'm sure they're going to change, but you can see the difference in the, the greens as I go to go forward here. So, <clears throat> can get our little little smudgy tool too. This smudgy tool is actually pretty pretty sweet. Like you can do some pretty cool stuff with the smudgy tool. It does take a lot, like your computer's just thinking and thinking and thinking. But if you want to just color blend a little bit, it gives you that opportunity. <clears throat> All right, so kind of work that in. And then another thing that I usually do is I just like to screw around with the layer effects and, and you know, just it might um, spur a thought or an idea or, you know, you might run into something that you, know, you really like in the layer effects as well. But we'll bring it right back up to normal and then like I like to work with uh, multiple layers and opacities as well. <clears throat> and we might have to do this, uh, the same thing that we did at the beginning again, where we're taking um, just some darker colors and working them through as well. Uh, that's another thing where you could actually pull a layer effect is pop a new layer, uh, go to your darkest area. This nice green color. Slam this down like this. Go into your layer effects. See, like, look at that, the way that this can help really create a sense of dimension for additional layers. You know, if you don't like the way certain things are turning out, but you like the effects of certain things, like, that's pretty neat, you know, if you were to take into consideration that really ominous background and, and how it's brought in some pretty intense blues and stuff, you know, you could take this layer like this and go back into this and, you know, cut out this, or, oops cut out the actual image itself. So that will 
go back in the history here. Deselect that. Go back into the layers. This guy. It helps you look at other options or if you want to slightly change the, the background variant a little bit. <clears throat> or even use it for uh, different parts of the background as well. So <clears throat> this, co this cover is actually going to be black and white. I just want it to work in, uh, in color just because a lot of the work I've been doing has all been black and white. So um, yeah, this gives you a sense of what it'd be like if it were uh, black and white. wanted to, to throw in those um, illustrations down the side and that too which I think would be kind of neat so <clears throat> but I still think this this illustration should have been skewed a little bit more to the right so it's not going to work probably in this uh, this regard unless I keep it the same width as this in here and just go down the panel <clears throat> But there we go. You get a, just a general sense here. This, uh, oh, that's the, the draw level. Um, there we go, foreground. I just want to knock it back a little bit more. <clears throat> not overly use it. Okay, let's just hide this layer. But I like what's happening in the background. So and then the foreground, what I could do is I could cut out the layer, control copy, control paste, <clears throat> and then just position that to where it is. We have the the background effect as well. We can go back into the full. Oop. I thought I had my one. And then just delete out that. So now these two layers are separate. This is a separate layer. And that back there is a separate layer. <clears throat> but this. I still want to play around with these layer effects. Might find a layer effect that might actually really work well for this foreground. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. That's one thing that I was hoping is that there would be a little bit more teal in the actual painting itself. That was just something that uh, didn't actually end up happening. <clears throat> it still can happen. I can still add teals. There's nothing stopping me from that. So let's go back to this guy. That is this effect here. Um, we can work into this layer as well. Holy smokes, that is dark. I'm getting a lot of glare, like a lot of glare. This is 
the sun's starting to come up over here. Looks to come in and just bombard me. Yeah, let's throw in another layer. Like if you're concerned, you could probably just use the uh, the wand tool too to um, use it almost as a mask while you're knocking in colors and like so. If you're you're coming down here and you just want to get a nice. Um, smooth zip line without having to worry about stop and ending gives you that ability to do that Same thing here. So not like real painting. <laughs> well, I guess you could do this if your airbrushing is all about creating layers and masks. <clears throat> to the foreground. <clears throat> Just how that works. Other thing too is you can go into your filters, filter, blur. Um, like Blasium blurs are pretty nice. They just kind of feather stuff out a bit if you don't want it as uh, A sharp. <clears throat> like so. I did that with the actual creature itself. One thing we're going to need to do is just go into some of the Selecting this, yep, this layer, which is fine. We can work over this layer a little bit. Oh, it's already muted, so we'll go into this a bit. Yeah, 
You can see some of the color variant as we work back a little bit more here. <clears throat> They, did I move the illustration? Kind of looks like I might have moved this actual illustration. No, nope. there's just a little bit of a white line showing, so. <clears throat> in an hour here. Really hard to see with the glare. <clears throat> what do I might have to do? <clears throat> see, with all this snow, we got. Tons of tons of reflection going on. There we go. That's a little better. <clears throat> Something weird happening up in there. I have no idea what this is there. Just a weird, who knows. I don't think it's any of these layers. It just looks like a Y. That is really weird. It almost looks like it could be, you know, part of the original drawing layer, but it's not. Part of the background. Let's do this. It's just weird. Let's get some weird areas that, you know, aren't really color blended all that well. <clears throat>
And sometimes working out from a little bit of a distance is kind of beneficial in some scenarios where you're just like, you kind of want to get a sense. Hair can be, uh, can take a lot of time. Just, just layer and layer and layer some more if you want. So, until it looks the way you want it to. Add your depth, add your shadow. throw on different colors <clears throat> just do it up do it up And the way it is, it tends to catch light from a lot of different different directions, so When I get to that hand, I get to that hand. I've just been good. I'm kind of avoiding it. I'm just working on this, so.
So one thing that we can do is throw in kind of the draw level. So we know kind of where the knee is. Because we can really It's a little weird, but
<clears throat> See, I like the way that hand's rendered. Let's take a look at this hand. It's not that far off. <clears throat> See, you get the general sense of it just strives. No, it's just starting to uh, just make it feel so much nicer. You can take the opacity down on this layer a little bit too. Just to add it as a layer, or you can keep it higher up. I prefer the opacity down just a little bit, work another layer. Bring the opacity down, work it a little bit, bring the opacity down, work it a little bit, and same thing. Just to get an overall sense of, of the beast. So, and then you can almost get a sense that, you know, you can see some of the, the muscles and, and stuff through the hair as well. <sighs> so, one thing that we can do is turn on the draw level and, um, Add another layer of just dark. Let's ram this up. Just have like a kind of a like a kneecap or something here. The kneecap position is going to change slightly. Same thing with here. You know, there is a little bit of muscle definition that comes through here. You do have some, some split right here. Just some, adding some tonal variation. I don't know why but the dog likes to be super dog like. It's hard to work two layers on one. ramming up. You're going to get some air muscle definitions here, right here, coming down the forearm, a little bit there. You know, beef up some of this stuff. chest muscle here. 
<clears throat> you're gonna get some definition that comes down in through the neck the jaw just the separation of these muscles as well We're just accentuating them just a tad. <clears throat> the same thing with the lag, you're going to get this sense of it tapering down. <clears throat> Let's get rid of the drawing here. Let's go back in the history for a sec. It's right here. I was always taught by one of my teachers to uh, always use brushes that are bigger than what you attend, intend to use just because it, it forces you to look at the big picture rather than not squeeze into the little one. So. drop that in behind the hair as well and then just maybe bump it up just a little bit and just some slight suggestion uh, does help in defining the position like you can see just a slight suggestion of the movement and even though <clears throat> you know you're not really looking for that specifically. Your brain is. Your brain's identifying to you that, yeah, this seems right. You know, there's muscles here. Like, you're getting more of a sense of how the, the form is moving as well. But, uh, we are at an hour and 20 minutes. Um, whether I push through this and just edit this video into a couple slices, fine with me, but you get to see the good, the bad, the ugly. Today has had its uh, moments of trials and tribulations, and that's what it's all about, is, is, is working through these uh, curveballs that are constantly being thrown and to try to figure out the best way to hit them. And today's solution was to flatten the multiple layers for one, I have issues with the layers as well. Some people create groups as well. Um, I don't know. I've been using Photoshop for a while, but I've kind of formed a way in a pattern, and it, perhaps it's a bad way in a bad pattern. But I do not know. It's just the way that I've just learned how to, to work through the program. I'm sure I could use a uh, up-to-date uh, method and methodology of how to uh, 
how to use Photoshop correctly. Because in the 23 years that I've been using Photoshop, it's definitely the program has changed a lot. But just like any artist, we all have our own techniques and and these types of platforms allow us to to work in specific ways and like any art form it's another art form so i'm going to stop the video here i want to thank everybody for taking the time to uh, watch me draw and learn together uh, take the time to take a look at lead 76 illustration there's always updates and things that I'm posting of new illustrations and so on and so forth and not to mention to follow us and support us on Kickstarter with the first Sasquatch Klondike issue. Issue 2 is currently being worked on and being developed as well and yeah like, support, subscribe all those things, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.